We've done a lot of charity work with Bees Abroad, and you might remember that um, District 6 supporting Bees Abroad as an international charity, I think it was three years ago. Um, so we're very much looking forward to hearing about Bees, why Bees are so beneficial to us, and a bit of an update on the charity. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me. District 6 is solid. I'm guilty. I'm the protest. Uh, so thank you very much for inviting me along. Uh, uh, Dave Bonner, I live just down the road from Coventry and Rugby in Stratford Dunsmore. I have beehives in the area. Uh, I brought some honey along if anybody wants to buy some honey. It's not compulsory, but I don't want to carry it home. <laughs> yeah, it's five pounds a jar, which is a reasonable price for local honey. Uh, I do these talks to raise money and awareness for a charity called Being the World. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. My uh, Kathy, my wife and I go out to Uganda every year, or we have done, 2020 was the last time. Uh, we're planning to go out in February, March next year, uh, because now COVID is manageable. We're now getting uh, stories and news that they have an Ebola outbreak in Uganda. So right. And we do this because beekeeping, whereas in the UK the vast majority of beekeepers are hobbyists, they're doing their spare time to for enjoyment. In Uganda, when we go out into the bush into some of the poorest communities you can imagine and transfer the skill, it is quite literally life changing. Uh, Somebody out in the bush who hasn't much land will sell their time and they'll rent the time out to work in somebody else's field and they'll get something like £90 a year. Yeah? So it's subsistence living. Uh, with three, four, five beehives and a bit of skill, they can double that money to nearly £200 a year. Just imagine the difference in your life if you were able, with a little bit of skill and knowledge, to double the income of your household. I mean, you could buy medicines, you could put proper clothes on the children, you could pay school fees, you could put food on the table. And, and that's why Kathy and I do it, because we go out, uh, we've got five active projects at the minute. Uh, uh, two guys out there, at Colin Matthias, We've trained as trainers, and just last weekend they did a training course at a place called Dockerwell, uh, where they have beehives, but they haven't a clue what they're doing. Yeah. It's just kind of, a beehive is just a box. If you don't have the skill, it's just a box. So in worst case, it's firewood. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so that's the background as to why Cathy and I do this, and why bees abroad. But through the course of this talk, uh, I'll relate little stories back into Uganda about some of the benefits, but I'm asked specifically to do a talk about the benefits of bees and bee products, products from the hive. So I'm going to focus on that today, as opposed to beekeeping in Uganda or other aspects of beekeeping. So it's fairly varied. I think there's a bit of structure to it. But when I do these talks, I have three objectives. Uh, one is to raise awareness and money for bees abroad. Oh, sorry, raise, let me get this right. One is to give knowledge and information. So you go out of the room knowing stuff that you didn't know when you came in. Uh, you may not agree with it all, but that's an interesting debate people can have, particularly amongst beekeepers. Uh, the second one is, I have a responsibility. You have given me an hour of your time before your lunch. I'm between you and your lunch. Yeah? <laughs> and that's, and I'm very much aware of that kind of the unknown and the side of that one. But you've given me that time. Uh, in return, I'm going to make you feel that it was a worthwhile use of your time and that you had an enjoyable time, so I'll try to do that. And the third one, which I'm sure won't be a problem in this august audience, but with beekeepers it's tremendously difficult, 
uh, just because of the way beekeepers are, and that is to raise money for bees abroad. <laughs> so if you enjoy it, I'm going to leave that there for me to collect on the way out. Uh, so I'll come back to those three objectives at the end. So Bees Abroad is a charity of leaflets around that have more. Well, let's talk about bees and their benefits. Uh, but first of all, before we do that, let's talk a little bit about beekeepers because there is a stereotype of beekeepers which was born over the ages and lots of people think that we look like that. <laughs> so, big beard, smoker pipe. We're definitely eccentric. You have to be. Uh, and we drive around in cars like this. <laughs> How many people remember these? Flat mine, flat near to mine had one, and all the wood was rotten at the back. Yeah. And one of the things we have in common is that we can become very attached to our bees. Some more than others. <laughs> and if you're careful, they don't sting you. If you're not careful, they do sting you. And some take it to even more extremes. I'll move to this side. So that's some of the stereotype when we get attached to a bee. Now let's see what some people think of us. <laughs> They've got to want to be. I want to be a beekeeper. I want to keep bees. I, want to, I don't want them to get away. I want to keep them. <laughs> too much freedom. I want bees on elastic so when they get pollen, they come back here. <laughs> My father was a beekeeper before me. His father was a beekeeper before him. I want to walk in their footsteps. And their footsteps were like this. Ah! I'm covered in bees! Ah! Covered in bees! Because that's your job, isn't it? They must lose it. Beekeepers must lose it occasionally. You know, you're there, you've got the netting, you've got 2,000 bees. And essentially, you're trying to steal honey. Morning, morning, morning. <laughs> hello. Hello, knock knock coming in, hello. Look, there's a Ferrari over there. Can you see that Ferrari? <laughs> yes, it's going very fast, isn't it? Well, morning, thank you. I must be just walking back with all these bees around. At some point they must go, what the fuck am I doing? I'm coming in bees! Hell! Come and be. And you don't get the normal perks of a normal job like people who work in an office. They have other people there. You can flirt. Yeah. You know, you're hey. hey, you're new here, aren't you? Are you getting out? Yeah. <laughs> Look, do you want a coffee? I'm just going to get a coffee. You need your coffee. <laughs> no, I like my coffee like I like my women in a plastic cup. <laughs> <laughs> Beekeepers can't do that. 2,000 people. Uh, hello there, you in the street. You're new, aren't you? Uh, do you want a cup of coffee? Just no problem. No real problem. I don't want a cup of coffee from you. You're covered in bees. I like my women like I like my coffee. Uh, come to me! <laughs> back off, back off, back off, back off, back off! Ah! Uh, <laughs> I was just behind you, boys. If beekeepers did get together and go on a sort of general outing, are they in a van with a load of bees flying faster, faster, faster! <laughs> faster, faster, they go, put your foot down! Yes. And, uh,. They have a queen bee. And <laughs> so sometimes people think of us like that. <laughs> uh, some of it is true, by the way. I'll leave you to decide which bit. <coughs> but beekeeping goes back thousands of years. Thousands of years. Uh, it's, uh, details of it in a tomb, a 
between 625 BC, where you've got bees here in the beekeeping, uh, pouring honey into this container. We then go back to 1400 BC, and we've got honeycomb, bees here, and honeycomb being offered. And there's a wall painting in Spain going back to 7000 BC where people are climbing ropes to get to bees which are at the top. The man in the container. Mm -hmm. And some of that honey hunting goes on today in some countries where they climb ropes and it's a bee called Apis dorsata which, which uh, builds its home outside. So man and bees have been together for thousands of years and man has learned, learned how to exploit uh, the produce of the hive. Right? So there are two facts here that you may be <coughs> <with. coughs> right? One is that a bee, the honey bee, is the only insect that man that produces food which is edible for man. Mm. The insect, that doesn't mean to say the insect itself is edible. This is it is producing something that's edible. And the second one, which I find even more fascinating, wondering about the chicken and eggs, is that uh, the bumblebee and more importantly the, the honeybee are the only creatures which produce the material to build their home from their own bodies. They don't use anything else. So in both cases they, they, they use wax. Honeybees in a much more sophisticated way and, uh, and it's the only insect which by eating things produces wax which is then use the wax to make their home. Interesting, that isn't it? Mm -hmm. How do that? <coughs> so let's have a look about the beneficial impact. <coughs> pollination, uh, and there's a double whammy on pollination. There's lots, been lots in the press about pollination, the importance of bees <coughs> and pollinators. Uh, and what's important to understand is there's a double whammy with good pollination. One is you have a crop, you have a flower. An insect comes along, a pollinator comes along, and it pollinates it, it has to pollinate it in order to fertilize to produce a, a fruit. Without pollination, it doesn't produce a fruit. But the other thing is, a well pollinated plant produces a better quality fruit than the one which is poorly pollinated. So, in the terms of Uganda, where pollination is key, uh, if we can get help subsistence farmers to pollinate their crop well by having lots of bees, then not only do they get more crop from the same acre field, the crop they get is better quality, so they can sell it for a higher price in the market. <coughs> so, uh, wax, I mentioned the wax, we have the wax, I'll talk about that, honey, uh, which you probably know more about than the other things. Uh, a thing called propolis, which is a resin from the trees the bees use. Royal jelly. You've heard of royal jelly? You may not want to use it after I've told you where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah. And bee venom. I'll finish off with bee stings. The venom of bees. All of those are beneficial to man in different ways. So let's talk about pollination. We take it for granted. I've said in Uganda is the difference between eating or not. Uh, uh, so that in Sorotti in Uganda we set up a training apiary. Uh, and this is it. This is a huge big mango tree. And these are the beehives, which are made from local materials. And we teach people how to make the beehives.